Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, happy Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday, sorry. Uh, these past few days have been kind of crazy and hectic on my end. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, does anyone know the change of scenery? Excuse me. There we go. Uh, for the change of scenery, I am currently at the University of Connecticut. I moved back in on Saturday, just before Hurricane Irene hit. Uh, and uh, first cl day of classes was today, and uh, this is going to be my first vlog here in my new dorm room. So, let's get started. So, bef so today I'm going to do my review of Mobile Suit Victory Gundam. Now, before I get started, I know I said when I did my first Gundam review, that I was going to do a Gundam marathon and watch every single Gundam series. I am unfortunately deciding to call it quits on the Gundam Marathon uh, because at the point I'm at right now, I've watched a lot. Like the after Victory Gundam, we get into uh, uh, G Gundam, Gundam Wing, Gundam Wing, uh, Endless Waltz, Gundam X, Turning Gundam, which I already watched, which I don't have to watch again. I'm probably planning to watch it again. We have Seed, Seed Destiny, uh, Double O. And those series I've already watched, especially recently, and since it's so kind of fresh in my mind, I feel like I get very bored with the series, and I started watching G Gundam, and it's like, there's no way in hell I can do this. So, I'm going to revamp the Gundam marathon. I'm still going to watch, I'm going to, instead I'm going to focus on the Gundam things that I haven't watched yet, which is very few. And I'm sorry if I let anybody down, you know, but it's just, I couldn't do it. It's just it was getting too heavy, too much. I wanted to explore other things, watch other things. And I just, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. I'm still going to do Gundam reviews, but I'm only going to focus on the ones I haven't watched yet, so I can give myself a clearer, more, a much better review. So today, I'm going to do my review on Mobile Suit Victory Gundam. Now, let's get started. So, Mobile, so the, it is the year one, it's the, it's the year 0153 in the Universal Century. So, it's been essentially almost 80 years after the one year war. So what happens is that after the like half this is after this is like thirty years after Gundam F ninety one, and the Zanskar Empire, which is led by Queen Mar Marita Armonia, who claims to have healing powers, it's a it's an empire that bases itself out of side two. The empire goes to war against the weakened Earth Federation, and through undying loyalty and religious fanaticism, the empire and its best forces conquer half of the Earth. Uh, however, resistance, called the Ligue Militaire, which means Holy Alliance, is formed in the Empire-controlled areas of the Earth. Their secret weapon is the Victory Gundam, piloted by a 13-year-old named Uso Evan. So, here's what's good about Victory Gundam. It is dark, yet hopeful. This is by far the darkest Gundam series ever. At this point in the series, this is about the early 1990s, and Yoshiyuki Tomino was suffering from a serious depression. And was struggling with depression when the series was in production. And the, his struggle clearly plays out in the series, giving Victory Gundam an ominous and very foreboding tone. Yet it also doesn't help that most that ninety to ninety-five percent of the main cast is killed off by the end of the series. Yet as dark as the series is, there's always you know, the the characters never lose hope, you know? It's kinda like the light at the end of the tunnel concept that is used in Victory Gundam, that these characters are constantly hopeful and, you know, very idealistic. And another aspect that I really liked about Victory Gundam is the portrayal of women. Uh, one of the criticisms I've heard leveled at Yoshiki Tomino and his direction and his writing is that his female characters are just quote-unquote men with breasts. Um, after seeing Victory... I didn't really see that as much, but when I saw Victory Gundam, I kind of see where that criticism was coming from. Um, the, the women in... You know, the, the women in previously... Tomino directed series, you know, really like it, they felt like they were men with breasts, and I could see that, you know. So, however, it it happened very early in his series, like Mobile Suit Gundam, Gundam Wing, uh, Zeta Gundam, Double Zeta Gundam. However, once we got to Shar's counterattack, we see a much more. Tomino gave us more, like his his female characters and his working with female characters was getting a lot better. And Victory Gundam, he's kind of got it perfectly down packed. Um, because what we kind of realize is that over half of the main cast is uh, female. So you have a wide array of female characters and wide different complex emotions. While you have some female characters that are slightly more feminine, some are more tomboyish, it's still very complex and very unique. And also what makes the series so fascinating is that Uso, the main character, 
uh, he doesn't have any, there's not very many male figures to look up to. The Ligue Militaire, most of its pilots consists of elder, the elderly, it's most, of its, most of it's comprised of the elderly people, women, and children. So Uso doesn't have a lot of adult role model figures to kind of look upon, so he kind of looks upon to his older female like pilots, like, you know, who he looks upon them as both like kind of like as big sisters and as mothers. And the relationship between him and the character between him and and these female pilots is really kind of fascinating. It's really one of the high points of the story because you know he's still learning a lot about women and how women work and stuff like that. And they they help him out, they tease him, and it's it's very it's very interesting because you really see a very diverse female cast and a very well done female cast. So. Um, So one, so one also thinks that's really good about uh, Zate, about uh, Victory Gundam, is that it's a very character-driven story. It's not just character-driven as Turn A Gundam, but it starts leaning towards that direction. Um, you, like the mobile suit battles and the conflict of this and the main conflict of the series, kind of takes a back seat to the personal like you know the personal struggles of the characters, and so it really makes you know. So the, but the, but the last 10 episodes of Victory Gundam are really good because it's just it's one insanely long battle. With most of the series giving time to show the character, you know, and while most of the series it kind of spends, gives time to show the characters and their strengths, fears, motivations, etc. Now, one other really cool thing about Zeta, about, sorry, I don't know why I still keep saying Zeta, but Victory Gundam, that's really great that I didn't really think about it until now, is how much how kind of insignificant space is. And, um, looks kind of interesting, because in, in his in his other Gundam series, uh, most of them have started in space. They sort of have an arc where they start in space, they go, to, they go to Earth, and then they go back to space. And this is kind of like the repeat of formula of Zeta, of, uh, of Mobile Suit Gundam, Zeta Gundam, Double Zeta Gundam, Shars Counterattack was the exception because it was set entirely in space. Same thing with F91. But what was really cool about this, which is really similar to uh, Gundam 0083, that doesn't start in space, in fact starts on Earth. And it takes them about a good 10-15 episodes to finally make it to outer space. And even then, outer space isn't really significant, and it really doesn't seem as grand and as vast and as dangerous as it did in the previous Gundam series. It doesn't really have sort of that significance and the importance because not all these characters are from space, they are from Earth. And they're fighting for Earth, and they're not fighting for the space noids or the people in the colonies. Which is really kind of an interesting turn, and even the final battle, even though it starts in space, it gradually leads its way into Earth. And it's sort of really interesting how that kind of, that it kind of changes up the story and the dynamic of the Gundam series, and it changes it up in a positive way because the whole space-Earth-space formula was starting to get a little stale, in my opinion. Now. Here's what's not really good about Turning Gundam, in my opinion. Uh, Turning Gundam has a really... Turning Gundam, why am I saying Turning Gundam? I'm sorry, I've had a long day today. Victory Gundam. One of the things that makes Victory Gundam so... One of the things that's most problematic about Victory Gundam is that it has a really forgettable cast. And it's just, it really, like, if a story is supposed to be character-driven, which it is, it's really hard to do that when your characters aren't really memorable. You don't really give two shits about the cast, except the really the main core characters. So, I think another reason why it's so hard to do a character-driven story and why the cast is so utterly forgettable is that they are killed off on multiple occasions. They are killed off at the, you know, more, like I said, 90 to 95% of the main cast is killed off by the end of the series. So it's really hard to connect and relate with these characters when they're getting, you know, killed off like that, you know? And that's one of the main problems I had with Victory, with Victory Gundam. So, the best way that I can really describe it, um, it's A, it's a lot better than Gundam F91. You know, and, you know, it's definitely sort of a, a return to form. I mean, it's the first, if you really want to think about it, it's the first full-blown Gundam series since Double Zeta Gundam. It was the first full-blown series since Double Zeta Gundam in, 19, in 1988, I believe. So, what can, so, while, yes, it is a dark, while it is character-driven, 
yes, there are situations where it's too dark in which all the main cast is killed off and you can't really relate to the characters. So it's really kind of a double-edged sword because there, while the, there are things that make it great, there are things that really detract from the story as well. Still, regardless, it is a highly enjoyable entry in the Gundam franchise and packs great action and a great story. And however, like I've said with all the Universal Century stories, watch them from beginning to end. Watch them from Mobile Suit Gundam and follow them chronologically because you have no idea what the hell is going on. Not chronologically, but at least like in the order of release, you know? So you've got to watch Mobile Suit Gundam, Zeta Gundam, Double Zeta, Shars Counterattack, War in the Pocket, Stardust Memory, F91, and then you turn to Victory Gundam. You'll kind of understand the basic concept because there's a long history with the Universal Century that sort of needs to be discussed and really needs to be fully understood before you watch the series. So, yeah, that's pretty much about it, and uh, I will talk to you guys in the next few days. I'm going to make a list. Again, don't know when my list is going to be. Figure that out the last minute, work something out. Boom, be done. So, alright guys, I will talk to you later. Have a good week, and uh, good luck if you guys are in school. So, alright, peace.